Welcome to France in Focus, I'm Molly Hall. Coming up in this edition, we take a look at the social wonders of cooking. Now, good food is good for the body, and making it can be good for the soul. No one knows this better than French chef Thierry Marx. The recipient of two coveted Michelin stars and a former judge at the TV show Top Chef, he's leading the way when it comes to having a positive social impact through the culinary world. Terry Marks, thank you so much for welcoming us down here in the kitchen. My pleasure. It's wonderful, really quite a treat to be here. Now I'd like to ask you, you have uh, received two coveted Michelin stars. You're known for your molecular gastronomy, which is, you know, very haut de gamme. What made you want to do then a boulangerie? Uh, la boulangerie c'était... Baking for me was a childhood dream. I started out with pastry making at a bakery, and it felt like going back to when I was a kid and living outside of a normal rhythm. We'd work at night and I'd earn a little cash and during the day I could do some sport or something else. You also have a wide-ranging experience in this, in this field. You're the chef at uh, Mandarin Oriental here in Paris. Uh, but you also have founded the Cuisine Mode d'Emploi or uh, Cooking Manual. Tell us more about this program and, and why it's, it's dear to you. The program is very simple. It's aimed at people who've been out of work long term, in neighborhoods where professional training is all but unheard of. So for people who accept our conditions, who accept our educational framework, one that requires rigor, commitment and consistency, it lets them look to the future. We're not interested in people's pasts. So for 12 weeks, they follow an intensive training program to get back into employment in the kitchen or at a bakery or in the service industry around the two. It's very intense. You have to be seriously motivated. But the 94% of people who do manage it get back into employment afterwards. Why? Why did you want to do this? J'ai décroché scolairement très tôt. Growing up, I didn't do well in the school system. I said to myself, what is it I can do for people who've had the same path through life as me, particularly knowing that things are even harder these days? I found I had this ability to create a solid training regime, one that, if you're dedicated, you can get through in 12 weeks. France has a reputation of having an elite culinary culture, uh, meaning if you only go to the right school, that's how you'll become a top chef. Do you believe that's still the case, or are there alternative paths like your program that make it possible? Things are changing, but it's true that the French system often sets a lot of stock in being the son of this person or the student of that person. Depending on where you trained or who you were trained by, your chances were a lot better of getting to a high level. That's what we have to fight against. You have to give the same opportunities to everyone who wants to get into this line of work. Are there other areas, uh, other sectors in life that can have the same ability to, to unite and to give uh, a sense of purpose to people besides cooking and cuisine? Other areas perhaps that you're interested in? You can apply the same model to a lot of different jobs. You have to remember that work can't be about sacrifice, it's about social connection. I think you need to develop all kinds of models for professional training so that social connection at work, not just one in cuisine but in general, is about learning a job so as to get on with other people. It's not about every man for himself, but working as a team. Why did you become a chef? I didn't want to be in a situation where work was a sacrifice anymore. I saw that with my parents and my grandparents. I wanted to be free, and the best way I knew to do that was to learn a skill, to have that ability to learn, to free myself and become the head of a business. Of course. Before we let you go, can I just ask you, do you have, if you had to name one dish, one recipe that you could do, do you have a favorite or is it constantly changing? For me, the magical item in French gastronomy is bread. Why? Because it's just flour and water, and it's about giving added value to those two simple things. It's about aroma. Smell is one of the longest-lasting memories we have. I just can't imagine any kind of cuisine in the world without bread. 
Super. Thank you so much. No, Thank you for having me. <laughs>
It's opening night for the restaurant. Hop, allez. Il n'y a plus qu'à. The first clients file into the dining room, entirely redesigned to meet the needs of its servers. The menu is simplified. And to avoid stress when taking orders, clients are responsible for marking their own choices. It's checked, validated, everything's been marked. We feel very welcome. They have the same place in society as we do, and of course, in places like these. The staff also have some other tricks to make employees' lives easier. So here we put handprints on the plates. It gives servers stability and confidence whilst they're carrying the dishes. Their families had a front row seat to watch their children at work. Very professional. It's more than I could have hoped for, thank you. It's a huge success for Antoine, Caroline and Flor. It's amazing, great day. Thanks to her. No, thanks to you guys, you're the ones who did the work, I did nothing. She may have intended it as a path to independence, but Flor's restaurant has also created a community of support moving forward. That's it for this edition of France in Focus. Thank you very much for joining us. We'll see you again next time.